A whole roasted cauliflower recipe that's perfect for the holidays and sure to wow your guests. Served on a bed of pumpkin hummus, sprinkled with popped quinoa, and drizzled all over with a roasted garlic cashew cream. Now, are you thinking, that looks so beautiful, that must be complicated to make. Well, this is Tasty Thrifty Timely, folks. Let me break it down for you. The whole roasted cauliflower takes 45 minutes to cook. The pumpkin hummus is ready in 10 minutes and can be made ahead of time. Popped quinoa, why take 15 minutes to cook quinoa when you can pop it in one minute? And the roasted garlic cashew cream takes five minutes to blend. It can be prepared ahead of time, but there is some prep work involved. It's tasty, it's totally worth it, but we all have busy lives, and our three-minute lemon tahini dressing would work just as well. Preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Prepare your cauliflower by slicing away the leaves and trimming the stem. Careful to not trim away too much of the stem so your cauliflower won't fall apart. If you have a roasting pan, put the cauliflower on the rack and fill the pan with some water. If you don't have a roasting pan, put the cauliflower on a baking sheet and put a casserole dish with water on a lower rack. The steam created by the evaporating water will help the cauliflower cook more quickly and evenly. Add two tablespoons olive oil, half a teaspoon salt, and a quarter teaspoon black pepper to a small dish and baste the cauliflower with half of the seasoned oil. Roast for 35 minutes, check the cauliflower, baste with the remaining oil, and roast for an additional 10 minutes or until the cauliflower is tender. Not bad, right? Well, the pumpkin hummus can be served cold or at room temperature under the cauliflower, so either prepare it ahead of time and store it in the fridge, or make it while your cauliflower is in the oven. To your blender or food processor, add two cups cooked chickpeas, one and a quarter cup pumpkin puree, a quarter cup aquafaba, the brine in the can of chickpeas, or use cold water, a quarter cup tahini, half a tablespoon lemon juice, half a tablespoon white vinegar, a quarter teaspoon salt, a quarter teaspoon nutmeg, and one small clove of garlic. Start blending. Add one tablespoon olive oil and two to five more tablespoons of aquafaba, water, or oil to reach your desired consistency. So I basically took my regular hummus recipe and just added pumpkin puree. And for this reason, if you're in a crunch for time, you can absolutely buy store-bought hummus and buy some unsweetened pumpkin puree and stir the two together. What I do love about making this pumpkin hummus recipe from scratch, besides the thriftiness, is that it makes quite a bit, 750 milliliters. And that means after you dress the plate that the cauliflower sits on, there's lots left over to dress the individual plates. And the hummus, the quinoa, and the cashew cream provide all the protein in this recipe. So by having extras of each, then you can make sure that each diner has a nice filling serving. And speaking of popped quinoa, it's quick, it's easy, but it can go wrong if your pan is not hot, hot, hot like almost to the point of smoking. So for this reason, I like to use my cast iron pans because they can withstand this heat. If your pan can't withstand a high heat without some oil, then feel free to put oil on the pan. And if you don't have any pans that can withstand a high heat, then feel free to cook your quinoa. And you can present it in the same way or serve it on the side. You can usually buy puffed quinoa or something like that as well. But. This pan's hot, so let's pop some quinoa. I have these on standby. Oh no, is it hot enough? Popping, popping. Can you hear the popping? It still smells okay. Doesn't smell like it's burning. Wow, that was like smoking and it still wasn't hot enough. Popping quinoa is so easy. <laughs> Popping quinoa is quick, it's easy, but there's a little bit of a dance with the heat. And my pan was like smoking and it still wasn't quite hot enough. This first batch I did is pretty good, but it's still a little crunchy. There's some unpopped quinoa in with the popped quinoa. My pan is smoking, my quinoa's popping, my boobies are jiggling. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe cut that part out. <laughs> to summarize, the keys to popping quinoa. Your pan needs to be hot. Very hot, smoking hot, so that the quinoa pops immediately. As soon as the quinoa pops, max one minute, get it off the heat, pour it into another bowl. That way it doesn't burn. Only pop a small amount at a time, even less than a quarter cup. That way the seeds have room to move around, they get heated evenly, and they won't burn. And shake the pan. Keep them moving, that way they don't burn. Last but not least, wear some oven mitts. 
So your cauliflower is still in the oven, your pumpkin hummus is done, your quinoa is popped, and now the roasted garlic cashew cream. And I roasted my garlic last night and prepared this last night. It's been in the fridge. This recipe is really simple. It is four to five cloves of roasted garlic, half a cup of soaked cashews, a quarter teaspoon salt, and a teaspoon of lemon juice. If you don't roast your garlic ahead of time and prepare this ahead of time, you have a few options. One, you can roast the garlic while your cauliflower cooks and then blend the sauce just before serving. You can semi-roast the garlic by cooking it in the skillet once it's cooled down from the popped quinoa and it'll take about 15 minutes to get soft and caramelized. You can quick soak your cashews at the same time and then blend your sauce. Or scratch the roasted garlic cashew cream and make our three minute one bowl lemon tahini dressing. And now the finishing touches. Fresh pomegranate arils, a third a cup crushed pistachios, and crispy sage leaves. Add one teaspoon oil to your cool down pan. Over medium low heat, wilt the sage leaves and sprinkle with salt. To maintain their color, you can blanch the leaves in boiling water for a few seconds before adding them to the pan. That will ensure they don't discolor and your dish will look as beautiful as possible. So this looks pretty beautiful, if I do say so myself, but you can probably tell that once you cut into the cauliflower, there is potential for this to look a little less pretty, and that's why I make extra of all the components so that you can dress the individual plates. And if you're loving the look of this and thinking, why do the whole roasted thing, why not just roast cauliflower steaks? Brilliant. I fully approve. This whole roasted cauliflower recipe can serve six and cost us $15.36 to make. To prepare the cauliflower itself costs us about $5.30. Adding the pomegranate pistachios and sage leaves costs about $5.45. And the pumpkin hummus is $2.60, the popped quinoa $0.40, cents, and the roasted garlic cashew cream $1.60. And it just so happens that I am allergic to cauliflower, so Brian's going to to come in here and eat most of this whole roasted cauliflower. Somebody's gotta do it. You also have to scooch down a lot because I'm much shorter than he is. So dig in. And what do you think? Should people um, click the link below for they this should. recipe? They should. And they should also hit subscribe and the bell because Ooh. they'll be notified for a new video next Sunday, which is? <laughs> Brian speaks a little slower than I do. <laughs> next Sunday coming up is our fan favorite on our website, our vegan baked ziti. You won't want to miss that one. Is this one good? Mm -hmm, I took a huge bite. <laughs> Have a happy holiday. And let us know if you make some whole roasted cauliflower. It smells good and looks good, but it'll make my tummy hurt. We don't want that. No.